Hey, and welcome everyone. I am making my first video, so please excuse me if it sucks horribly. I'm only doing this because a lot of people have asked me uh, to make videos because they see my prints coming off my photon and my support placement and removal is so clean, as you can see from these pictures. Uh, so I wanted to share with you guys my knowledge of Chidu Box and the photon and the ways to make miniatures come out really pristine looking. Uh, I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube uh, about supports and Chidu Box, and they're from people who I don't think really print miniatures all the time like I do. So you're seeing some of my results. And if you want results like this, I'm going to lead you to them uh, in a series of videos starting at the beginning and working way up to what I would consider very advanced uh, Chidu Box support placement. So let's get ready. These mo uh, models, by the way, are from the amazing Artisans Guild Patreon. Please check them out. Uh, the Hive Colossus, which is an Umber Hulk, and the Hive Colossus head, which if you look to the right, it tells you uh, what models are in here. There's two models. Hive Colossus, which it selects if I hit this, and the head, which selects if I hit this. The other way you're going to select the models is just left-clicking on it directly. Okay. If you hold your mouse wheel down and move it around, it moves the entire plate. If you left-click not on a model and hold it, it also drags the plate around. If you right click and hold it, it changes the rotation. You're rotating around an axis. If you do that, you don't like the view you get, you come up over here. This gives you the left view, the front view, and the top view. I normally start from the left view. Okay, so we're just going over the very basics here so everyone understands what they're doing, what every button does here. So I've dropped the model in. If I want to move something when it's blue, which is selected, I left click on it and drag it. So left, left clicking and holding grabs the model, grabs it like President Trump uh, grabs some stuff. And if you want to change the rotation, okay, the th thing I don't like about this button, if you click on, if you click anywhere off any of these things, it, look, it, it shuts it down. You have to click it back again. So red does this vertical rotation, yellow, rotates it side to side, and blue is the yaw, as they say. If you don't like what you've done with it, you just hit reset. If you want to change it by degrees, so that's 15 degrees, right? Or you click here and it does an increments of five degrees. Okay. Next up, very important one, scaling. So a lot of people ask me questions about scaling. So in Chitterbox, it's quite easy, of course. If I would say I want this head to be, and the whole model to be 10% bigger, the ratio is locked if this box is gray. If it's not, you can change one aspect at a time. So first, let's show you locked. If it's locked, I hit 120%, it's 20% bigger, okay? If it's unlocked and I do that, it's only gonna change the Z axis, which is up and down. So now it's taller, but it didn't get any wider, so it's it's out of proportion now. So normally when you're changing something, you wanna keep this done, okay? So if we were changing the whole model first, we would click this and do it, then we'd click this, come back over and do the same thing, so they're the same size, they still fit together, okay? Last button, very important for people making an army of whatever, undead, goblins, kobolds. I do this all the time, so I drop my model in, and I select it, and I say, okay, I wanna make a second of this, but I want it to look different. So I come up to, and we're going to go over all these buttons, but I come up to clone current model. So it's, it, it looks like two separate pages stacked. I hit it, it clones it exactly. But I want this to look a little different. I come over here, I X mirror it. Okay. Now you can see it's mirrored. So at least if you have two different swords, I mean, it gives them a slightly different look. If you're making a big army, it, it works. Okay. So but for now, let's get rid of that one. Anything that's selected, if you come over to the garbage can and left click, boom, delete. Okay. Next up, uh, just so we can see the buttons up here right now, open file. So if I want to drop something else in, I have to hit open file. If you left click, you can also do that by hitting open. If you do open project or save project, that saves as a chew box file. Uh, so if you're just trying to open a normal STL to add to this plate, you have to use open. Okay. Uh, save file, screen capture, who cares? Okay, undo. The undo button is interesting. 
the last thing I really do, well, let me let me just show you. The undo button doesn't undo certain things. So it doesn't work like Photoshop where it basically undoes no matter what you did. So if I clone this model, okay, and I say, you know what? I want to get rid of that. And I say, you know what? Actually, I want it back. I go to undo. It doesn't come back. It doesn't undo a delete for some reason, which I don't like, but that's part of the program. You need to know that. What it does do, let's say I switch this, move it around, and then I hit undo. Boom, goes right back to where I started. So the undo button works on some stuff, doesn't work on other stuff. Um, auto layout, that's if you have a lot of models, you click this, it just resets them so they're not touching. Very useless in my mind. Hollow, this is quite important. I'm going to make another video that shows you how to hollow a model like this and dig a hole. Once you've hollowed a model, you usually want to dig a hole to allow uh, resin to drain out. And also when you go to clean your model, you want the IPA, the alcohol, to get into the model and you need drain holes for that. Also, if you're rinsing with water afterwards, it does help to clean the model out. So we're actually almost done for this first section because you know almost everything so far. So let's look at the other buttons. Once you have selected whatever is blue, if you come over here, right now we have settings selected. See, it's blue up here. This is grayed out. What this is, these three little missiles uh, going into a pizza box, it looks like, these are actually support supporting a model. So if you click that, it takes you to your support menu over here, which that's the topic for a whole nother video. So don't worry about that for now. Uh, and now the model is ready to be supported. So just to show you a quickie, if I just hit platform, it supports only from the platform up, nothing from the model itself. Now I hit remove all. If I hit all, it's, it also supports from within the model. If there's anything that needs to be hit, there doesn't happen to be on this one, but if the a support need to go from here to here, say it would show up uh, when you hit all. Uh, auto support suck, and that's gonna be the topic of my next video. So we go to remove all, so it's gone. So now you know how to get to your support settings as well. Uh, and like I said, I'm gonna do a whole nother video on, on how to use the supports, how to change the supports, how to do all that stuff. The other thing, the other last button that we didn't really go over, if you want to look at things in X-ray, you hit X-ray. I have never found that really useful, except if you want to see uh, what part might be hollow, what part's not. Um, instead, I just normally do this. It, if you drag this down, it shows you what's going to print layer by layer. Right? This is actually very useful when you're doing supports because it will also help you to find unsupported areas, which we call islands, which may need supports. Uh, so now you know basically what every button in basic chitter box does. And as the last thing for this video, so it, it doesn't look like we learned nothing at all, anything in red is outside the blue box. That means it's not going to print. This blue box defines the print bed of the photon. So I drop my model in, anything in red just wouldn't pin, would not print. So I'm going to come over here to my rotate. Okay, I'm going to select this one though, sorry. And that's annoying. Rotate it, grab the blue, turn him. This way I know he looks like he's going to fit. Then I just left click, grab him, and move him onto the plate so I see no red. Okay, that looks pretty good. I don't like where his hand is over that head right now because the supports may hit, so I'm just going to move the head to the side for now. Okay, so now it looks pretty good. And that's it. Uh, for the basics. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you're more advanced, uh, please, you know, follow along the next few videos like this one for me and, uh, and follow. And I will be posting videos on the next step on this exact model. So you'll see supporting this model from start to beautiful finish. Thanks. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it.